Massa. Just in time for the party. Would you like a cheese puff? Hello. I'm sorry to bother you, but I'm having a dinner party and I seem to run out of coffee. You can be anything you want to be there. You can see anything you want to see there. There's excitement in the air for you and me there. Fancy free there. Take your family there. But You've got to be there yeah. You've just got to be there You'll feel free there You'll be what you want to be See what you want to see Seven holes the key there Be there Sweethearts. Hello. We're back. We're back aren't after we? a week off. What a couple of weeks it's been. Yes. You've been to Texas? Yeah, I have. And um, you were playing with a few guns, weren't you? I was. 
I'm just checking everything's working all right because we had technical issues last time, didn't we? We did, yes. But I think we're all right. With today. no grommets in the bike works tonight. Yes, I've been to Rooting Tooting, Texas, and uh, I shot guns there, which was weird. Did you enjoy it? No. No. It's like something I've done. I've done it now. It's like bucket list tick. Um, I wouldn't want to do it again. It was too loud. Like it was really the how loud a gun is is terrifying. Um, how many people were there kind of getting off on it was weird. Did you channel Cagney and Lacey? A little bit and a little bit Sabrina from Charlie's Angels. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was weird. Weird. But I shot a Glock uh, and I shot like a cowboy gun, like a proper pistol, like a six shooter pistol. With a little barrel. With a barrel. Um, but it's just weird thinking that you could, like, that in your hands could take away someone's life like that. I know. Uh, was just a weird feeling. So I wouldn't do it again, but I've done it. Um, right, let's have a look. Who is in the Wigan Slingback? There's lots of you in. Uh, it cuts off lots of your comments when we, when sort we start, start streaming. So so we're going to say... I hope you're not saying anything important. Uh, we've... we've got Tracy30 here. Tracy30, welcome. Tracy, Tracy, Tracy. Uh, Lee Ludlow. Ludlow and Bloody Cahoon. Ludlow and Bloody Cahoon have watched EastEnders early. Yeah. So they get a little break before we come on. Yeah. Um, Nibbles and Bubbles are in, uh, just from Down Road, who we're looking forward to seeing soon. We've not seen them for a while. I know, and they're, they're going off on the holiday, aren't they? Yeah. I don't know if they want that publicised. They're having, the, <laughs> well, they've got some time off. <laughs> That's what I'll say. Uh, it was uh, Lee Ludlow, Nibbles and Bubbles, Tracy 30. Right, let's roll on and see who else. Philip Double P is here. Hello, Double P, Philip. Um, Brammy D is here. Darren and Rebecca in France. Bonjour, les enfants. Bonjour, le Bramley Pomme. <laughs> um, Philip says, I'm currently on vacation in your beautiful... Well, I'm in Newcastle. It's not far, Philip. Not far. Just a up road from us, really. I was in Newcastle last week, weren't I? In a hotel a couple of nights. You were, weren't you, Newcastle? Uh, who else have we got in? Seven Network is in. Hello, my darling. Uh, Neil Sandwell is in. Oh, she popped over there. Neil says, evening all. Lady V's given me her lurgy, so I've mm. taken to bed with a hot vimpto. Oh, you need hot toddy dolls. Oh, I hope Le Grand Dame Barbera is well, hot not. Hot Vimto nice. sounds nice, doesn't it? I don't think it hot Vimto sounds nice at all. Uh, who else? Who else? Who else? Neil Sauer said Neil. Stuart Bloody Cahoon. Cahoon Now, Stuart's got a little um, YouTube channel called um, something like Stuart like, Stu Wants a Natter. Stuart is having Stu a Natter. Stuart a Natter. Um, so Stu if you want to pop your little link on yes so Stuart's got uh, he just gets on there and chats he just chats about all, all sorts of things he's just started so he's looking for lots of followers and people to subscribe so um, and, you'll, and, you'll, and you'll hear and see him I mean, we've met him haven't we he was so lovely. that's Stuart Cahoon Stu sure has, has a natter, natter. Uh, <laughs> sorry Stu uh, Dale Ibbotson is in hello Dale my lovely uh, da, 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 da. Scylla Black, she says, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host. Oh, she's got a little... Scylla Black, and she's got little... Um, um, what do they call them? Speakers, what are they called? Megaphones. They called? Megaphones. Um, welcome, Scylla, nice to see you. She was, was she away last time, or was she here? Do you want to look at this? Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I've... Now, Scylla, you, you, you're, you're getting everywhere at the moment, isn't she? What, Scylla B? Yeah. Yeah, she's, she's over... Uh, Scylla, you're getting in danger of Alison Hammond level of overexposure. Because, I mean, we... Happy birthday! We... I mean, we... I'm not being cocky, but we sort of started it, really, didn't we? We found Scylla... Scyllagrams years ago. No, but we started doing it about two or three years ago, didn't we? Yeah. And now the Scyllagrams are sort of popping up everywhere. Yeah, Scylla's everywhere. good for Scylla. <laughs> uh, so, nice to see you, Scylla, my lovely... Uh, Coral Daft is in. Hi, Coral. Hi, Coral. Steam Paul. Rocks is in. Steam Rocks. Steam Welcome, rocks. Steam Rocks. Steam you Rocks. Uh, de -de rolling down, rolling, rolling Andrew Chapman. down. Andrew Chapman's popped in and out. He's at work. Oh, Lily okay. Law is in. Hello, Lily Law. Love you. Um, right. I've just got a new Lily Law soap on the go, and it's very nice. Oh, no, she's she's made some lovely soaps, hasn't she? It, and Kangles. 
Yeah, lovely. Pauline Grant is in. Hi, Pauline. Um, Linda LeHughes is in. Linda That's LeHughes. my lovely cousin. And she says, I've just fixed me a big gin at G&T. Hope all is good. Oh, nice big GNT. We're not on the booze tonight. We're on soft. Oh, we were on the yesterday, weren't we? What am I on? I'm on dandelion and bird. I'm on b- bars raspberry aid. Yeah, we were on the we were on the ale like, yesterday for far too long. Uh, Pip is in. Shalom, my Shalom. good friend. Um, <laughs> I want to sing. Um, Pip, can you hear me? Pip, can you hear me? Pip, can you feel me? Pip, Shalom, can you hear me? Uh, who else is in? Jason Darcy is in. Jason says, don't forget to thumb the boys up. So, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, click that little button that says like. Yeah. And if you're watching on Facebook, click the little button that says but like. We've got 18 likes, though. We've got 18 likes out of 55 of you. Can so, you change that to 81? Uh... Who else is in? Uh, Joel, Joel Hazeldean. Hazeldean. Welcome back, guys. Welcome back, everyone, he says. Um, t- 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 Helen is in. Helen from Down Road in Hull. Helen. Helen. Red- Humberside Radio DJ. Uh, lovely dinner lady. Um, Paul McFarlane is in with his Paul's bold back. capital letters saying, uh, he's, I missed you, my Scarbados brothers. Well, we've we 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 were impressed with you, Paul, with your with your Wednesday um, podcasting, podcasting, footy podcasting. It's nice so that much. you're back on that. Now I know it's not the right song, but for Paul and Diangela, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to your anniversary to your wedding. Yeah. <laughs> So it's your wedding's birthday. Yeah, your wedding's birthday. Um, so happy anniversary, Paul and D'Angela. Um, it was just earlier this week, wasn't it? It was, yeah. And we saw a nice little photo of him. A nice little picture of Paul in his, in his kilt. And D'Angela, lovely little white frock. Uh, my dad is in, David and Anne. I've just spoken to you on phone, so I know you're all both all right. Um, NP is in. D'Angela is in. Um Anyone else? Emotional Urban Homestead UK. I saw your name there. Just pop by. Uh, let's have a look. Anyone else? Anyone else? Oh, there's quite a lot in tonight. Um, oh, Helen from Alls talking about the Premier League darts. <laughs> she likes a game of darts. And our she loves a game of arrows. I did see Emotional Urban Homestead in. Um, let's see. Anyone else who's here who's saying hello? Um... I think that might be about it. Squeam, Squeam Queen! Queen. Uh, Squeam Queen is our lovely um, horror fanatic from over in the States um, who's amazing. And she's lovely. She's lovely when she pops in. From Where's she from? She's from... Uh, uh, Minnesota. I want to say Minnesota. Is that right? I think so. Uh, Darren Small is in. Dazzle and Brizzle. Hello, Dazzle. Uh, and I think that might be... Or oh, Will Venus Will is Venus. in. Hello, Will. And over in Facebook world, we have... Oh, the first one was our lovely Welsh boy, Mark Hall. Hello, darling. I think he said there later on that Alex is running late. Oh, Alex. Follow my lovely Sarah, Sarah Simpson. She's saying hello to us and Peggy and Hope. My elbow is better. And it is, is... Oh, I was in pain, wasn't you I? You were. Oh, I'm in agony. Uh, Mark Hall and Alex have been um, living their best... On a flotel? <laughs> yeah, their best boating light. What's that name of that sort of dusty woman from Howard's Way? Jan Harvey? No, the other one. Dulcy Gray? Dulcy Gray. They're like Jan Harvey and Dulcy Gray. Why do you say dusty? Because she I... looks a bit like... Is it a foundation? I think, yeah, she she looks a bit like the sort of dust you'd have on a moth. Or oh, she looks like a sort <laughs> of... The, like they're an eggshell. <laughs> Uh, Paul says it's not their anniversary. Their anniversary is October the 10th, but thanks anyway. Oh. He was just sharing a wedding picture. Uh, yeah, Mark and Alex have been in a flotel. A flotella. Or as, uh, they, as it's called in Wales, a flotel. Uh, lovely Mark Monday Pearson has popped in. Say hello. Sending love to me, the patient. And so is lovely Melanie. Melanie Fairley. Um, Jason Rigby, our receptionist, is um, there if you need her. <laughs> um, I think she's filing her nails when I walk by. Oh, I don't know. She's not filing papers, that's for sure. Uh, and reading, what was it, Jackie? Reading, <laughs> yeah, reading. Oh, no, look in. Look in. Um, Philippe and Jackie's the 14 bras. 
says hello bonsoir chicken chicken butties I wonder if Carlos is with him and Joel's also popped in here with his bowl of new sweet corn as has Pauline McFarlane mm-hmm. uh, Key McKenzie hello Key McKenzie from, from Southport. Southport from Southport that's my man Key McKenzie is Key McKenzie new to the party she is I think. is she new to the fun bus I think so. And it wouldn't it wouldn't be a well, we're gonna sling back without good old Louise Dudman. Dudders. Our Dudders. Dudders from Down Road. Say hello. And lovely nib followed by lovely nibbles. Uh Carlos Bobbins Duffo. Uh Gemma Alexander's just popped in, say hello. She's uh, our little Scarborough neighbour. From the other side of Aldi. Yep. Um and Chris is asking, did you shoot a Uzi 9mm, no. I could have done. You could shoot machine guns, but I didn't want to do, shoot a semi-automatic or whatever they're called. We've also got lovely Katie Fraser and Ian Tushy Rushy from Hull. Sarah Garlock. Sarah, now, Sarah Garlock and I used to walk home from school together. Did you? Yeah. Me and Sarah and Miriam, who sadly, Miriam's no longer with us. She's Aww. died. But yeah, me and Sarah used to, we walked home from school together. Which school was that? From Formby High School. From Formby High School. When I was in like years one one and two, I guess. Yeah. The sec- at secondary school. And now Hello, look at lovely. You. Now you're zooming. Um, oh, here she is. Popping in. She's having a glass of uh, non-burnt champagne. Only the best for... Here she Miss is. Miss Devereaux. <laughs> By the way, it's her 55th birthday next Wednesday. Oh, she's not oh, 55. She's not 55. She's not 55. <laughs> she's had a bit of a Middleton. <laughs> she, she looks good on it, doesn't she? She does indeed. Uh, well, so we got in um, Andrew Chapman. Was he just over there? He was. He's popping in and out, but he's at work. She's at work. I don't know what she's popping in for. That's another new name, <laughs> Liam Manning. Hello, Liam Manning. Do you remember um, Katie Manning from Doctor Who? You wouldn't remember Katie Manning from Doctor no. Who. No, I know Bernard um, Manning. Katie Manning once crawled round a, uh, Ruby Wax's feet with Liza Minnelli holding a cupcake singing Happy Birthday. Oh, I think you've shown me that video. On BBC. Uh, followed by Chris Gilbert. And uh, Chris is with Wes and Rex the Whippet from Kingscliff. Kingscliff always reminds me of like where Crossroads was set. That was King's Oak, wasn't it? King's Oak, yeah. King's Oak. Uh, Jill Barron, I've just seen her name. Uh, Jill Barron is in, and Heather Warren from Heather York. Oh, Heather, pop over to Scarborough on the train. Come and see one of our live shows. And um, we've got uh, Key McKenzie, I've already said. Oh, we've got quite a lot of people on Facebook tonight. Yeah, it's we? busy. It's busy, busy everywhere. And Katie Fraser. I'll say hello to Katie Fraser. And is that everybody? Uh, Jamie, did you say, go ahead, punk, make my day when I shot the six shooter? No, but I did say to the guy that I was with that it was like a dirty Harry gun. Is it Dirty Harry, mm. that? A Clint Eastwood gun. And he said um, it's more of a sort of old cowboy gun. But the gun was called El Patron. El Patron. I'm Mexican. Yeah, it was re- it's really like a heavy gun. I didn't like it. Well, I watched Death Wish recently. I remember when you were away. And he, he was given as a gift in Death Wish 1, like an old classic cowboy. And they use it, it's he, horrible. He uses that to avenge. I do like load. You have to load the bullets and then like push the bullets out when you've shot. Mm. Put push the shells out of the pistol. But the other one, because the Glock, it like pings out. So this bullet just like flies out. There's, the bullet goes that way, but the shell sort of flies out that way. Oh, so you're avoiding that. We've been to the vets today. Yeah, Peggy's got a urinary infection. We hope she has. I think she has. She's old, it's, it's so same we've got to keep her eye on she her. She had one just before Christmas, and it cleared up within a couple of days, so we're hoping the same. But, you know, she's getting on. She is, so we've had to actually book an appointment for her to have, like, an ultrasound scan, um, which means we'd have to leave her at the... She's like, we'd have to leave her at the vets for that, she which will, she would hate. She will go ballistic. Um, but we're if, hoping... But if, it, if her little... Your infection clears up. We, we don't have to take. Yeah, the vet said we can cancel that appointment. So finger, keep your fingers crossed for her, everybody. Oh, yeah. yeah, we don't want to put her through that. She's not. She's too precious to be left there on her own, isn't she? Oh, she will just. She, it'll stress her out so much. I think being in like a little cage at the vet. Yeah, she's. I mean, she's not even been overnight. She's hardly on her own ever. So, um, um, Stuart's just put on a link on Facebook for his uh, YouTube channel. Um, so Stuart has a natter. Stuart has a natter. So if you can click on that before the end of the night and subscribe and join his merry band. See if we can see if we can use Peggy Cam. See if she's live. 
I don't know if she's down there. I think she is. There she is. I think she's just having a little rest, look. Let me a little bit further down. She's flat out. There she is, look. There she is. She's had a busy day. She had a busy day, isn't she? Yeah, she has, little lambkin. Um, lots of nice messages coming in. Katie Fraser wants to watch our TV quiz show uh, skits. Um, give us a clue, it's quite fun. Uh, and Lee Bolton said, your Whatever Happened to Baby Jane trailer is so top. I've written a letter to Daddy, lol. Oh, thank you, Lee. We're dressing up as... Um, yeah, they're making a comeback in Hall on Halloween. Yeah, Baby Jane and Blanche Hudson Live. for the Halloween show. So if you're booking for the October bingo, when we advertise it, yeah. um, we'll be able to dig a little bit of them too. We're doing um, photograph. I think we're doing photographs next weekend on our on Easter weekend. Yeah, we're going to try and do our photos to advertise the shows the that we've got three, coming up because we want to um, get in the booklet. Yeah, and then we can get it advertised and get it on sale because I know some of you are already booked in to come and see us on June the thirtieth. So as soon as we can get those tickets on sale, we will. Mm. Are you doing any more TV skits, says Katie? Yeah, hopefully. We will when um, we've got time. And I've just been so busy back at work. So we started, I if you well, don't know, we don't started know, all of this yeah. in isolation, in lockdown, when obviously neither of us were working. And we did like one or two, one and a half years of uh, photographs, a photograph a day. Um, and then we started doing videos. Yeah. And then um, videos went on YouTube and then we just created like one video a week, wasn't it? Yeah. And then, obviously, when the lockdown ended and uh, everybody was flying again, Jamie started his work. So we have um, we've not put as many on, but we have got but plans we are for plans stuff. for some. But yeah, my work um, my work takes me all over the place. So if I'm going away, I'm away for like a, a, at least a week or a week and a half. So it's hard to get the time to do them. But we are doing live shows a well, lot. We're not going. We're not going anywhere. We're still we're still going to be here. Oh, Alex Clark has just walked through the door, fashionably late, he says, but that's not particularly good for someone who runs buses. Um, Alex, we were saying that you and Mark reminded us of um, Dusty Dulcie Grey and Jan Harvey on your flotilla. Your we, flotilla. we hope you were a bit, um, uh, a bit Howard's way. But sadly, like the buses, um, if you wait for Alex, only one comes along. Ah, oh, but he's very tall. <laughs> I... Then oh, me and Timmy Alexis Carrington Ward were chatting about Howard's Way. We're chatting about all sorts of stuff. But I mentioned Kate O'Mara being in Howard's Way. Um, and it sort of Timmy remembered that. And then I said, they're on YouTube. You can find them or they're on UK Play. So he then started watching them. And I had little messages from him and his um, husband, Dex, were saying, this is so shit. I that is awful. I don't remember anything happening in it. And then I said, I, I think I said to Timmy, what episode are you watching? He said, well, like season season one, episode one. I said, Kate O'Mara didn't come in till season five. I think they brought her in to save it, didn't they? Yeah, so then he jumped to season five. But even with Kate O'Mara, Howard's Way is bad. We were going to do a skit of it, weren't we? But even we can't get, get the energy to do a skit. Do you know, I think we could really make a funny one. We just, <laughs> we go, were, we just say yachts. You'd, you'd, have, to, you'd have to look at who they are. We could go down to the um, harbour to Marina. do it. Yeah. Dudders, we might need you. We might need you to come We've and be security. We've got plenty of 80s wigs and chiffon scarves and um, a, bit, a few we weird fish tops. There's loads of 80s wigs up there. Look, some of those beauties could come, couldn't they? Yeah. And I, got, I got a new one delivered yesterday morning, didn't I? Yeah, a lovely, a, lo a lovely, um, well, silica, silica, color. silica colors, really, silica red. Um, so yes, look, um, I've just realised I've been teaching all this week and last week, or like this week from home with Mrs. Mangle up. Nothing wrong with that. I normally swap her for a, a, a London poster. Oh, let's leave her up. I'll leave her up. No one's mentioned it. I was teaching in Australia as well on Monday, and then in the morning he was teaching the Far East at five thirty in the morning, weren't you? Yeah, and Australia. Yep. Australia, New Zealand, Asia, uh, China, and somewhere else. Because I, I got up to go to the toilet, and I heard him talking, teaching people. I thought, oh, look at him up there, teaching the Far East. <laughs> um, we've also got to mention um, our, our, our other chum, Carlos Bobbins Duffer, that he's got his YouTube channel as well, called The Gad About Dad. So, yeah, The Gad About Dad, 1057. But he's put the link in, the Gad About Dad. So get yourself subscribed to the Gad About Dad because one of his next videos is going to be his exclusive 
vlog of our bingo event with Dame Barbara Cartland in attendance. And a lot of his videos of him, jack are him popping around the, the world, isn't it? You've watched a few of them, haven't you? Yeah, I have, yeah. So yeah, watch. So it's Carlos, Carlos Bob and Stuffer, aka Richard Bob and Stuffer, and of course we've got um, uh, Will Venus. Everyone, and Will man. Venus ASMR. If you're interested in makeup or just interested in that kind of sexy, relaxing ASMR voice and noises, he head to Will Venus. He even made a video of uh, ASMR from his shopping hall. What like opening things think, and rattling yeah, things? Their packets and and they wraps. um. They're also a wig maker. So some of their videos are about like wig making and how wigs are woven and created. And I mean, fascinating. And they have a podcast. So what a talented bunch you all are. Um, we are going to talk about... Oh, he Helen from Hull says Triangle with Kate O'Mara um, was on before Blake 7. <laughs> Don't know why that amused me. But yeah, Triangle. It had a little rotating thing of a ship, a cruise ship. Triangle was about a ferry, wasn't it? Yeah, something. Like <laughs> I remember the little rotating thing. Wasn't Kate Amara like sunbathing in a bikini on the ferry? She might have done. Oh, oh and of course, while we're, while we're YouTube, talking about plugging um, YouTube channels, we can't not. We leave can't out leave out here, here she, she is. is. Which is, um, you know, you really have to go and look at the library. That here she is is created because there's some funny, funny interviews on there. Here she is is on the radio every uh, weekend as well with a good two hour like in depth the interview, and uh, I was I was on the train journey the other week. I was listening to here she is interviewing Chesney Hawkes, mm -hmm. and it was good. So if you're into that kind of that kind of star, get yourself on here she is his back catalogue. <laughs> Have a rifle through her oh, vault. And she, she interviews like Rusty Lee and Biggins and all sorts. And yeah. Sue Hodges, which was one of my favourite interviews. Oh, yeah, Sue Hodge. Oh, here she is. We, we need to meet and chat and find out what Sue Hodge was really like. She'll only say good things, good things. Um, I think Stephen Hodges popped in and said that he hopes my, my um, ginger wig isn't made from ginger nuns. Ever so Ever scarce. So scarce. Um, let's have a look. So we're talking this week about telly. Telly that you remember. Mm. So it's stuff that, like, from childhood, probably from childhood, has, like, stuck with you. So, like, things I was looking... Like, the lesbian kiss in Brookside, I thought. Because I do remember that, like, being such a big deal. But I was pretty much an adult when that happened. Mm. Free Deirdre Rashid. I think I was still, like... I'd class myself as, like, adult when mm. Deirdre was... Um, was uh, arrested. But things like that. Obviously a big one for our generation. Mm. Our generation. He won't remember it. But I know you guys will. I know Helen Beat will remember. Nosy Bonk. Oh, that bow, weird. Bow, that looks bow, weird. I bet uh, Caroline Ibbotson remembers Nosy Bonk. That's um, stuff of nightmares, isn't it? So it's like stuff that stayed with you. It might have stayed with you because it made you laugh so much. But it probably stayed with you because it terrified you. Yeah. Or it made you cry a lot. It's those sort of things. Um, Feed Me See More says, um, when Harold Bishop went missing in Neighbours... Yeah, I remember that. He was sat on like a rock when he, and yeah. then he just disappeared. Yeah. Paul McFarlane says, who shot JR? Mm. Like, I remember who shot JR, but I don't remember. I was too young, I think, when that happened. I remember, Do you remember, I remember it? watching it. I remember it like being and on And I think there was a big, stuff. massive gap, wasn't there, until the next episode. Well, it was the end of a season, yeah, so it would have been I mean, a year, I think. Which, oh, that was to annoy me. T Tushy's just mentioned Nosy Bonk from Jigsaw. Yeah. Um, oh, here's a good one. Gareth from Porto. Hola, Gareth, if I didn't mention before. I remember this vividly. Diana from V swallowing the rat. I don't remember it, but you showed me, didn't you? We watched V when you bought the box. I bought you the box set. Oh, yeah, Alan had never watched it before. Um, and I just oh, I thought that was weird. In fact, that whole like that whole week of telly, it, I must have been like thirteen, maybe when V was on, and it was on every night of the week, like two hours. Brilliant. I remember a man eating an onion raw like an apple as well. And that stuck mm. in my mind. That was in V. Um, uh, Louise Dudman has said, um, 
P when PJ went blind on Biker Grove. Do you remember that? No, I didn't watch Biker Grove. I was too old, but I remember it. I can't see Jeff Mann. <laughs> he got shot in the the face by a, a paintball. Um, but it's all jumping, jumping. The boy from space freaked nibbles out. Yeah, the boy from space. You don't remember that either, do you? No. Boy from Space was in uh, was in Look and Learn or Words and Pictures, and I think he spoke backwards. Me and my brother Ross mm. used to say that my elder brother Ewan, who's normally in, might be in, was a little bit like the boy from now, Space. Now, Bobbin Stuff has mentioned Freddy Krueger. Now that really did freak me out when I first I first saw the first movie. But then the more movies that came out, it, it just got stupid, didn't he? Well, he's no Bob. Bobbin Stuff is talking about Freddy Krueger in V. Oh, Same sorry. Rousey. Oh, so Freddy Krueger was in. I forgot to tell you all. <laughs> when I was in my when I was in the airport lounge, I'm a gold flyer now, my darlings. When I was in the airport lounge at Los Angeles just last week in LAX, like a mad journey home from Texas, but I had to go to Los Angeles, so I went into the lounge. I was sat very close to Freddy Krueger. No, no, no. I'm pretty sure it was. Is he still alive? It must yeah, yeah, have been oh, him. Yeah, he's in those like it looked like him. Not like Freddy Krueger, it still, looked like He still that pops actor. up in horror movies. Yeah, he was in Scream, I think. Yeah. But he's been in other stuff. I think it sort of, did it sort of ruin his career a bit? Because he was only, he was only known uh, for, most he was only known no, to most be Most made Kruger. his career, didn't it? He was had a weird know, face. I don't know, but he's always seems to be like a bit ropey horror movies. He was movies. dead nice in V. He was a lovely oh, little, was he? he was a really friendly little alien that joined the resistance, I think. And then I was also in Celebrity Spotting, my first lounge in Heathrow. I was uh, in where there was Steve Coogan. Really? Yeah. But, um, but I think he, he's famously quite private, isn't he? Mm. So I'm not going to say anything to him. And Armistead Maupin, who I really wanted to go and say something to, because he was such a big part of my growing up, the author of Tales of the City. And I was going to go up and say, Mr. Maupin, your books changed my mm. life. And then I thought, oh, no, no. Oh, well, I'll leave him on his own. Right. More stuff that stuck with us over on this side. Um, Hilda Rogden crying with dead Stan's glasses. Oh, I just watched that not long a couple of years ago when they were, re, you know, renewing the the old Corrie. Um, Vera's funeral on Corrie. Oh, I remember the Corrie one when um, Vera comes and picks Jack up. I don't remember. I don't remember Corrie that Literally much. She was a good little girl. Come on, Pegs, move out the way. Yeah. Um, Dale Ibbotson says Caroline Ibbotson said, "Who's that?" Regarding Nosy Bonk. Oh, don't don't Google it, Caroline. It'll oh, terrify you. Uh, Nibbles and Bubbles remembers Bobby coming out the shower in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Um, Scylla says poor Harold being washed out to sea after Grundy fired him. Um, Andrea Gall agrees. Hilda Ogden as well. Steam Rock says who killed Tina, but I don't know who that who that would refer to. I don't know Tina. Dale says he thinks it was a guinea pig that Diana ate. I think it was at one point because she really did like her jaw sort of oh, dislocate. Yeah, it, was. it wasn't a mouse, was it a rat? I think she eats a rat at one point, but later on the the guinea pig's the one where her neck goes. <clears throat> um, Feed me Seymour says um, there's somebody at the door. Just the pink windmill kids, they stay with us. Grot bags. Grot bag stays with us. Um, Fred the weatherman falling in the the water. Fallon getting abducted by aliens in Dynasty. Um, Damon Grant's death in Brookie. Oh, yeah, I remember that. In Damon and Debbie. Um, digging yeah. up the patio in Brookie. Um, Tales of the Unexpected, the royal jelly one. And uh, Darren Small will be talking about the programme you've mentioned soon. Uh, let me have a look. Poor Damon, yeah. Um, Getting, it was in Damon and Debbie, I think he got killed in the little yeah. spin-off. The motel fire in Crossroads was quite shocking. That was. Um, who killed Lucy Beale? Oh, it's, we're, too, we're too old for that one, for, from our childhood. Popping over onto here, because I don't want to miss people on Facebook. Oh, Timmy's mentioned Sapphire and Steel. That that was a bit weird, wasn't it? I, I remember the one with the chess box. Do you remember they pieces. just got like they they're stuck somewhere, aren't they? Staff yeah. Steel. But the, never... but the chess box was meant to sort of transport them, and then at the end they open it, it's just all the pieces are in there, and it's like it's not magic anymore. Timmy says the, there was a soldier who was a ghost who whistled "Pack up your troubles" while walking around a deserted train station. Yeah. Um, look and read. 
Here we go. Sapphire and Steel Gemma says it was the episode with a man without a face that still haunts my dreams. Mm. <gasps> Face, um, faceless things are ever so creepy. I think there was a Doctor Who years ago one there with they had like it looked like you know the plasters you have when you when you cut yourself. Yeah, yeah. But they have the whole face covered in that kind of like. Uh, you got you've got the gooseies. Yeah. Uh, Stephen Lodge says I remember Wordy from Words and Pictures. Every now every. Ta- even now when I write the letter P I say in my head top to bottom was that the little pencil and over <laughs> was that the pencil with a light on the end of it uh, yeah it was Chris Perinda says this is a little little young Chris Perinda the last episode of Quantum Leap where Sam never finds home oh, I know, was there never like a movie made where it sort of cleared it all up was that the one where he just he used to sort of change, change his... Person? Yeah, and he'd look in the mirror and he'd be like a, a black woman in sort of a taxi, a, a driving Miss Daisy, and he'd go, oh, crumbs. Or like, something oh, like that. And they I don't a, think he said crumbs. And then he'd go like a, a week off filming. What did he... No, because he had to play the other bit as well. Oh, did he? But so he, the Scott, Scott Bakula was always in like a, a sort of ill-fitting dress. What did he say? Did he say, oh, crumbs? He used to say a word, like a phrase, and then it would go into the theme tune. Um... Oh, lots of memories here. Hang on. Let me try and read them. That one we've seen. Um, Arthur from EastEnders crying. Oh, Arthur he, from EastEnders when he trashed the, the Christmas room. Well, he did, well, he fiddled the um, Christmas club money, hadn't he? Yeah, but he trashed the, the room, didn't he? He had a breakdown. Yeah. Um, Tales of the Unexpected flypaper. Uh, alias the Jester, BFG. Danny Kendall dying in Mr. Bronson's car in Grange Hill. The Emmerdale plane Ooh, crash. That, that was dramatic. Yeah. Um, oh, it was oh boy that he used to say in uh, Quantum Leap. Yeah, lots of people saying that. Helen said it. Carlos Bob and Stuffer. Uh, Chris Perinda. It was oh boy. Um, Sapphire and Steel. Lots of the Sapphire and Steel. Um, the pencil was words and pictures, says Alex oh, Johnson. Okay. I remember that. Wordy was look and read. So different programmes. Um... BBC Threads. Do you remember Threads? You've seen Threads recently. Yeah, I watched it recently. Do you remember it from when we were younger, though? Oh, I watched it at school, I think. Oh, Threads. It was so dramatic. It was so traumatic. And um, certainly not a happy ending. Uh, Stephen Lodge says, um, the public service, public information films, seeing a boy being electrocuted after sticking a stick. Uh, no, sorry. Being electrocuted and bursting into flames after climbing a pylon. Now they Jimmy, they Jimmy. were they were things that you can't get rid of, isn't it? Those yeah. because I remember one, and I tried to find it, and I think it's Leslie Judd, and she gets it's about scolding babies with tea cups of tea, and they throw like a bucket of tea on her, as in that's how much on Leslie Judd from Blue Peter. Yeah, I remember. It. I, I wonder if any of you can remember it. She stood there. Get, re- get reception on it. I couldn't find it anywhere. But it's obviously, I'm sure it's Leslie Judd. And they throw like a, a bucket of tea on her. And she's like, oh, this is how much tea would fall on a baby. Or something. <laughs> I, I remember it'll be about scolds and... Oh, reception. Leslie Judd, scolding water. See what we, we can find I'm out. I'm sure it's tea. Um, of course, um, Helen Beat came to our bingo, didn't she? Our Halloween yeah. bingo dresses um, Jimmy from public information film with, with frisbee with burnt frisbee <laughs> and, and wig. fried hair and, yeah, the hair was so sizzled frazzled here we go joel hazeldean was of course a young younger les enfants a millennial let's have a look he says um strange adverts pat and peggy's fight in 1998 yeah public fil- public information films railways yeah and when there were dream sequences in neighbors and brookside imelda's death do you know Imelda is? I can't remember Imelda. The only Imelda I know was a bully in Grange Hill, I think. Um, but they were made to work. They were made to scare you, weren't they? Those public information films. Here we go. This is this is this is the sort of memory that I'm I'm looking for now. This comes fresh from um, Bubbles down the road. There was an advert with a chubby boy eating cream cakes <gasps> at his grandma's house, and it was basically an advert about heart attacks. I remember it. I remember it. <laughs> That's the sort of like vague memory that I want to. Um... And he, I've got a feeling that it shows him grown up, and his wife's shoveling food down him as well, and she's going more cake, more cream cake, and the, I think there might be a heartbeat sound effect. 
Oh, I remember that, Chris. Yeah. Oh, look, Gemma, Gemma, spoiler alert. We've not watched Tenko yet. But we've, we've seen it now. We can't take that back. <laughs> Somebody's going to send us Tenko, but they haven't, have they? No, never came. I can't remember who it was, but they said they were going to send it. But... It doesn't matter. Uh, Sarah Simpson, I remember when Sonia gave birth to Rebecca E. Sanders. Oh, yeah, because no one knew she was pregnant, did she? No, yeah. Didn't she go around and uh, give birth at the um, the newly arrived Slater family? I think so. And, um, yeah, Big Mo. Big Mo, yeah. Mo again. And isn't that child now grown up in it? Yeah. Yeah, Sonia's kid. Uh, uh, Timmy says, Miss Diane, <laughs> dying from brain hemorrhage. Poor Benny. Oh. I remember Benny. It was Benny's story as well, wasn't it, that? I don't remember it. He was in love with her. Timmy, I've not watched it yet. Spoiler alert. So I'm like, we're watching Crossroads. Alex Clark says, The return of Crossroads stays in his memory. And then the return of the return of the return of Crossroads The as well. ending was just bizarre. Almost. It was all like, wasn't it all Jane Ash's dream? In it, she works in Asda. <laughs> right, let's uh, do the advert break. And then we're going to be back with our top five um, memories from childhood television. Wow. Talk about sheer terror. Well, what did you think so far? Listen, this side is about to come to an end, but I want you to be sure and flip over to the other side where the best of Hollywood beckons. Um, I'm going to freshen up a little bit, so I'll see you on the other side. Honey, why don't we get some more wine, uh, more hors d'oeuvres, more everything. Okay. Okay. The great times in your life. The beautiful colors of a color tile room. Make them yours now at our big 34th anniversary sale with store-wide savings up to 70%. Save on lustrous ceramics like this Italian floor tile, just $1.79, or Venetian wall tile, only 53 cents. Elegant wood parquet, just 49 cents, and quality vinyl floor tile, only 79 cents. Come to Color Tile now during our big store-wide anniversary sale and save up to 70%, but hurry, sale ends Sunday. Introducing American Classic Crackers. Quality you can see. Quality you can taste. Quality so golden good, we had to name them American Classic Crackers. Dairy butter, cracked wheat, toasted poppy, golden sesame. American Classic Crackers. Rich, crisp, satisfying. Taste them. Discover American Classic Crackers. Quality you can see. Quality you can taste. George Burns just made a deal with this songwriter to make it big. I can get you what you deserve. Concerts, gold records. There's only one small catch. My God. Guess again. You'll have a devil of a good time with George Burns and George Burns in the network television premiere, Oh God, You Devil, Monday. It'll be fabulous. Cowboys. Burger King introduces a new burger with a genuine Western flavor. The Bullseye Barbecue Burger. Two flame broiled burgers on a Western bun with melted cheese, sizzling bacon, and topped with a smoky Western style barbecue sauce. The Bullseye Barbecue Burger won't be around for long, so get it while you can. You only have to ride as far west as Burger King. The best food for fast times. Tune in to He Haw this week, and we won't insult your good taste, because we've got classy Tanya Tucker as this week's co-host, along with new superstar Randy Travis, country legend Roy Acuff, and the happy sound of Whitfield Ward. And don't forget, we'll have the Hee Haw cast of country characters from Cornfield County to tickle your funny bone and bring you a smile or two. Plus, we've got great gospel music. 
That's Hee Haw right here on this station. Saturday afternoon at 1 on 10 TV. What do you know about cranberries? I know I like Ocean Spray. What do you know about cran apples? Apple juice was never like this. Good for you. Tastes so good too. Cran apple. The unique cranberry has essential things your body needs. So does cran apple, the good for you cranberry apple drink. Better taste it, fresh fruit flavor. Ocean hey, Spray. What are you now? Cranberry drinks. It's good for you, America, from Ocean Spray. For everyone who loves meat and loves pizza, Pizza Hut introduces our new Meat Lovers Pizza. It's loaded with six delicious meats and a blend of cheeses. If it sounds like your kind of pizza, come in and try it soon. Only at Pizza Hut and only for a limited time. There's always something happening, something going on. There's always something happening, something going on. At Brewway Mall, we've got it all. Hi, I'm back. And so are you. You know, I feel as though I know you. Well, at least we share some of the same tastes. Oh, I'm sorry about the cheese puffs. I ran out. But I still have quiche. There's always quiche, isn't there? Always quiche in that the house. The cheese puffs are always the first You don't go. think that's her husband, do you? No, he, look, he, he <laughs> looks like he shouldn't be there. He's not the father of them kids. No. Um, it's time for our... Bye, Five, four, three, two, one. So our five moments that are stick with us from telly from our childhood. So we are starting today with Alan at number five, which is... And if some of you have been with us from the start, you'll know I'll, I'll, I'll have some repeats. That's that all I've, right. I've mentioned in other nights. Let me move that around. Um, for those who can't really see, this is um, some mothers do have them. Which is um, comedy with uh, Frank Spencer and his wife, Betty. Ooh, Betty. Now, well, as a kid, my mum and dad used to watch this. And it was, you know, family comedy. But I was always feeling distraught. <laughs> I, did, I, wasn't, I didn't get the comedy. Did you have anxiety? Cause I had anxiety mishaps. because of the mishaps. And the scrapes you'd get in. <laughs> and I was just like, God, this man is just... He's going to kill people. Or... Is that really a bit from... Some of us do have them. Yeah. Oh, and, that, and I heard from somewhere, whether it's real or not, that he used to sometimes do his own stunts. He did all of his own stunts. Um, I hope baby Jessica's not in that car. And things like, he, there was one where he's hanging off a bus. On, on roller, roller skates. skates. I'm like, God, <laughs> he's either going to kill himself or kill other people. And then he was he super glued himself to something. <laughs> and then someone fell off a crane and crashed. And he'd go to somebody's house and wreck it. Just he used to traumatize me. So he didn't annoy. I thought it was about was, all and annoying. He was creepy, you. and he was creepy. <laughs> he used to creep me out. I never got it. Ever. I didn't get the comedy. Oh, look at lovely Michelle Dutrice there in a lovely summer dress. I never got why she was with him either. No, she was silly, wasn't she? Because he was an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> and um, baby Jessica, little baby Jessica. Oh, it was all a bit wrong when baby Jessica came along because. I think maybe Jessica should have been put in custody, protective custody. Well, she had Betty, didn't she? <laughs> Betty was a sensible one. Right, so for Alan, so Alan's number one is, some of us do have, number five, yeah? yeah that's some number, of us do have them. Yeah, number five. Gemma from the other side of Aldi says, totally agree. Right, my number five is, are you ready, boys? <laughs> oh, I know this. We watched this from about a year ago, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> Um, Jamie Lee Curtis in Trading Places. Now, two reasons that this this particular scene as well sticks stick with me stuck with me as a kid. Number one, I had no comprehension that that was a wig. <laughs> well, even though there's wig heads behind her there. Yeah, but remember, I'm only going to be about eight probably. Mm -hmm. So when she took the wig off, 
Like, I was amazed that she took the wig off and she had this, like, funky short hair. Number two, first pair of bristles that I, I saw on television. So first pair of boobs, because that top comes off. I mean, that top's not hiding much, but that top comes off and you see Jamie Lee Curtis's bristles. So, yeah, that was... Um, that's my number five. My first pair of boobs on television. I love the earrings. <laughs> I think my first pair of boobs was... Um... How gay is that? With that picture, like with the, what we're seeing there, and you, you're able to go, oh, a lo- lo- lovely pair of earrings. Yeah. Um, my pair of first boob might be um, um, American Werewolf in London. But that's not just boobs. That's that's Bush as well. Yeah. That's Jenny Agatha's Jenny Full Agatha. Monty. Right. <laughs> Swiftly moving on from Jamie Lee Curtis's um, Bristols, let's move to Alan's number four, which is... Oh, jeez. Again, <laughs> I just didn't get the fact that it was funny that it was, uh, yeah, that Wurzel had these heads, <laughs> but he would pull off and put on again. I just found it creepy. And I also found, that, found it creepy that he'd go into a cafe... And ask for tea and cake, and they'd let him eat with mud on his fingers, on his muddy twiggy fingers. And not only that, like, I bet you didn't like that little bit of hair coming out of his chin no, either, or the warts he had. And the other bit was at the end when he got into his little stick, and he went, "Ah!" Oh, it used to really stress me out. You know these little heads that he's got. Mm-hmm. When he put them on, did he become a different actor, or was it the same? No, see, it was him, but he just he just had that. Makeup on, if you know what I mean. Gemma said there was one called the Thinking Head. Yeah, what was that was, like? It, I don't know. It must be one with the. It must be one with the top hat on. But he used to sort of like he'd do this sort of twisting thing. It's like he's breaking his own neck, and then it come. Oh, Tracy Thirty says, "What the fuck is that?" A words will come in. You can look it up on YouTube. It's just. Um, it's a kids' TV show from the seventies uh, and early eighties, and it's about a scarecrow. And the heads thing wasn't every episode. It was only every so often you'd see this sort of thing with his collection of heads he had. But, oh, yeah. Uh, Gareth says he asked for a slice of tea and a cup of cake. <laughs> slice of tea and a cup of cake. <laughs> and he never paid for it. <laughs> or, you know, he had no money. Jason Darcy says the end of it, he'd fall forwards or backwards, so it was something like t- good to look forward to, like which way is he going to fall yeah, and this also, episode? They went, it went to Australia, this programme, and he went with it. And it's an uh, Aussie version. Is Aussie it even version. more terrifying? And he still does that. Ah. Who is that weird, like, his boss that's even more the weird? man. He's weird as well, isn't he? Yeah. Um, Timmy Alexis says Cat Weasel was more revolting. Cat Weasel was a different programme, I yeah, think. Yeah, he was... He was, um, he, he was a similar, but I don't think he pulled his head off. Dale said he's just remembered he gave you an, a Wurzel Gummidge annual as part of your birthday present. I know, I must be going to look through that <laughs> and see if there's the bit about the heads. <laughs> But whoever thought that up, that idea, because I don't think it's in the in the children's storybooks, is it? What taking his heads off? I think yeah. most probably, yeah, because his head's only a turnip, isn't it? Yeah, but mm. that clown head looks terrifying behind. They all him. look <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> oh. Silla Black, right, quite rightly, says that show should have been banned. Silly, you must have known the lovely. Um, is it Bill Pertwee? John Pertwee. John Pertwee. She must know Bill Pertwee as well, mustn't she? Isn't Bill Pertwee someone from mm. Dad's Army? Yeah. Um, and then he's got a son, hasn't he, that's a famous actor now? Yeah, Sean, Sean Pertwee, I think. Right, Jamie's number four is... Do you have any idea what that is? Flippy a garden? Yeah, so my number four is, in fact, this. Vandals broke into the Blue Peter Garden and caused rather a lot of damage. And one really cruel thing they did was to pour fuel oil into the fish pond. Well, we've drained the pond and we've rescued some of the fish, but a few of them have died and the oil itself has caused a lot of damage. The vandals then broke our lovely ornamental urn given to us by Mr. Taylor from Barnet. They then smashed up our sundial and then callously threw it into the pond. And if that wasn't enough, they then trampled on the bedding plants as well. Well, we hope to repair the damage, and we may even be able to repair the ornamental urn. But it's very sad to think that a few people take such pleasure from harming their fellow human beings and from hurting animals as well. And here are the survivors. It really is an absolute miracle that they have survived. Brian has come along to give us a bit of advice. Brian, what do you think? Do you know, I think there's most people in the world laughing their heads off at that bit. 
The vandaling of the Blue Peter Garden. Weeping. Oh, because it was like it was everyone's garden. It was like as a child, it was your garden, like the Blue Peter Garden. And Percy Thrower put so much effort into it. Did they ever find any of the people who did it? Well, there's a rumour. Someone will write it in. There's a rumour that it was two quite famous footballers. Here we go. Gemma said it. Rio Ferdinand. Really? Apparently, when he was a kid, yeah. And another another person, I think. Another footballer, maybe. Who knows? Oh, but yeah. horrible. Um, and poor fishes. And there's an episode of... Life on Mars? Is it Life on Mars? Life on Mars, or the sequel to that, where it. it's um, the Gene Hunt character goes and does it, and he, he vandalises the garden. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So she's just said it. DCI Gene Hunt. Uh, Nibbles and Bubbles says that's her classic Blue Peter era. It's mine as well. Um, Duncan, Groom, and Ellis. Classic trio. No strong regional accents back then, says Lee Ludlow, quite rightly. Not on Blue Peter. Blue Peter back then, I remember Adam and Joe talking about it. Blue Peter, when we were kids, everyone who presented it was like a nice teacher. Yeah. But now, Blue Peter presenters are like kids. Hey, guys. <laughs> like kids at school. Because she's very teacher there again. Very naughty that some vandals have come in. They're very naughty. Yeah. Um, and you sort of expect to go something. And they're proper bell ends, aren't they? <laughs> What a, bunch of, oh. what a bunch of... What a bunch of... Yeah, so Blue Peter Garden being vandalised sticks in my head. Um, it was just a big shocker. Yeah, rank people. Rank, rank thing. Type, 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 type. Talking of shockers. One of my first TV deaths I saw. Um, Rini Roberts, Coronation Street. Um, being killed in a car crash. What happens to her? Um... Her and um, Alf Roberts have gone out on, I think it's a bank holiday, Monday or something, and they've gone out for a little day. And um, they're driving along, and there's a there's a lorry coming. And um, I think he tries to get out and stop, stop it. Oh, Alf does. Um, I don't think he's in Alf's the, not in the car, is no, he? No, and then it ploughs into the car with Rini Roberts and she dies. And do you see her like that? No, she's, that's the actress. No, but do you see her like oh, you covered see in blood? Dead. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> And the next episode is her funeral. And I remember it being really, like, shocking as a kid to, to see a character. Was she a get... nice character? She was all right. She, was, uh, she played by Madge Hindle, who's in Nearest and Dearest, you know. the. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I think she's in Pat and Margaret. Now, one of us must dress up as her in our Coronation I Street do. video. Is it you? Yeah. Um, but I remember it being really shocking, because it was like a, you know, half past seven at night, the episode. <laughs> Scylla quite rightly says um, she's got a look of Thor at Dame Thora there. Yeah. <laughs> but hopefully Dame Thora wouldn't have... No, I don't know problem. whether Madge Hindle decided to leave the soap or whether she was pushed. I don't know any of that. And perhaps our receptionist might know. But um, it was a bit of a shocker. I wonder if um, Rini decided on that colour green for her coat because she knew green and red pop. That's why surgeons wear green, isn't it? Because they, they clash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... Timmy says it was road works and the traffic lights weren't working. It was working. something like that. And Alf had to get out and he was trying to stop the, the, the lorry or something. I don't know. Here we go. Neil Sandwell also says um, they get stuck in the middle of road works. Yeah. And Pete Potofsky burst in the pub and says, hello all, I'm late. And then he goes, really Roberts? Alf Roberts took me for a driving lesson. Um, oh yeah. Poor Reenie Roberts. My first TV death. Right, my number three is... Oh, yours is a death as well. No, he do, he's not dead. Oh, is he not dead? Zamo. Oh, great On heroin, yeah. Um, this was like the end of the episode. They kind of knew it was going no. on. Yeah. And um, Zamo, um, yeah, started... Uh, that was when they found out that he was on heroin and stuff. It was right shocking for Blue Peter to have someone on heroin. Mm-hmm. Like injecting and stuff. Our receptionist said that Rini Roberts was pushed. Oh, was she? Yeah, because they want they Podmore saw the future of Alf as being a single man, and uh, poor Madge Hindle didn't have a contract renewed. <gasps> so if I'd have been Madge Hindle in that photo, I'd have done that with two fingers. Alan did that to me on on Monday. I came down and I said, "How's your How's your bad arm?" And he went like this. To show me that it was working again. Because I couldn't do that, could I? The day <laughs> no. before, oh, it was, it was an agony. Um, yeah, so, Zamo, which led to... Say no, no, just say no, just say no, no, just say no.
I don't mute. Just say no with Zamo. Um, so that and that episode ended, and I think it went to like a sort of special edition of like news round or something. But loads of kids sitting around talking about drugs and but, issues. Um, Grange Hill was good for a vehicle to get messages across. It was, but I was only about, I think I must have been about nine or ten when I watched did they, that. Did Shocker. They, did, they, um, did they do stuff for, like, for, for sexual health? Um, I don't think so. Did, no, did they not? I, I can't remember Grange Hill doing anything like sex or pregnancy or things like that. I might be wrong. Grange Hill changed because it went on a little bit. The theme tune changed and it went a bit funky. So it might have changed. But I don't remember... There was like inter-school romance with the, the dishy guy with the big lips and the big mm. air. What was he called? Ant. Who looked a bit like Morton Harkett. And he, he went out with the games teacher's daughter, mm. I think. Um, Nibbles and Bubbles says, you're a fabulous Roland. I was. <laughs> I was even shocked when I dressed, <laughs> dressed up that day. Drugs are bad. The Grange Hill kids then went to um, the White House and met Nancy Reagan. You see? <laughs> you see what that vehicle created. I think little Janet Sinclair. I'm only trying to help you, Roland. And I'm sure, um, probably said it to Nancy Reagan. I'm only trying to help you, Nancy Reagan. I'm sure that what's what was that woman called? The one at the theatre school. We used Anna, to like Anna Scher. No. Oh no, Sylvia Young. Sylvia Young. I bet Sylvia Young was like that with Grange Hill years. Anna Scher was a bit Grange Hill. Oh, was she? She's like Sylvia Young's rival. But yeah, Sylvia Young would have definitely sent a and couple I, along. Can I ask, was Pauline Quirk ever in it and Robson? Or was that before that? No, before no, no. That? No, 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 but Naomi Campbell's in it. Oh, is she? Naomi Campbell's in it looking wicked. She's a proper sort of like um, a leggy, leggy black girl. And Ian Tushirushi is... Not said, to be confused with Precious Watkins. I've said the famous, was also famous, famous phrase. I only want to be your friend, Roland. Aunt Jones, that was the, uh, the, 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 the dishy one, yeah. Pete Potofsky says Aunt Jones, swoon. He sings a few bits of Just Say No, doesn't he? Mm. Philip Jack Fortinbras says, and I'm, I can't allegedly, this might not be true, that one of, during the Just Say No campaign, one of the Grange Hill kids was smoking weed in the White House. You said yes. <laughs> right, let's have a look at Alan's number two. I'm a house of horror. In particular, I mean, there's a lot of them, and um, I think was it Philip Small earlier on said how I'm a house of horror, the um, the house that bled to death, which is horrific. But this was what did my head in. It's the Hitchhiker one. Uh, but I can't remember what it's. Uh, Rude Awakening is it called? No, no. Can you remember the story of it? Yeah, the driving in the rain, and you see this creepy hitchhiker with his yellow coat, and the dad picks him up. And he's in the he's sort of they're driving along, and then he sort of he sort of attacks the dad with a and you see this big horrible, pointy fingernail, and the dad crashes the car. Just to say, uh, Gabby Chassie's just popped in and out. Hello, Gabby. Hi, Gabby. Thanks for the postcard. Um, and um, the dad sort of becomes like a sort of replacement. Wait. Oh, really? And it's all they're all got doppelgangers, and they've all got these horrible nail on the horrible teeth. Gemma Alexander from Gemma from the other side of Aldi says, Alan, soaps aside, I think we may have shared childhood I trauma. I think we have, haven't we, Gemma? We should, we, we, should, should, we should perhaps have a little TV viewing night. <laughs> Gemma, we were in the craft bar yesterday having rhubarb strice and we should meet in the craft bar. Yeah. And you and Alan can discuss all of this. Our traumatised TV programming. <laughs> and I can talk about Jamie Lee Curtis's Bristols. But the thing about these Hammer House Horrors is there's quite a few of them which are which like Dinah Dawson, Children of the Moon. Um, so Melanie says this one and the pet shop one. Oh yeah, with um, Peter Cushing. And Gareth in Porto says tennis court and child's play from Hammer House of Horror. I remember tennis court and child's play. Two Faces of Evil. Two Faces of Evil. That's what this one's called. Oh, some of them. Some of them I do really like. Some of them are a bit, a bit rapey. But um, there's a fair few of them. So it's are... not the films, the Hammer films, is no, they're it? It's an like hour, a series. They're an hour little horror. And the theme tune still makes my spine tingle. It's not do, do, do. It's not that, is it? No. I think right. I sang it for one of the bingo themes. And um, I think my receptionist got it, I think. <laughs> I think she did. I think she guessed it. Um, I think um, uh, Lee Ludlow guessed all, all of them, didn't he? Yes, he, he did. He won that round. Lots of um, lots of yours are creepy. This is my only creepy one. 
And if Timmy Carrington's still in, I think he'll know this actress. I think he knows this actress. So this is called The Exorcism of Amy. Okay. This is a kids' TV show from the 80s. Dramarama. Katie Fraser's just mentioned Dramarama. This is a, an episode of Dramarama. The actress here is Lucy Benjamin. Do you know who Lucy Benjamin is? Is that yeah. the right name? From EastEnders? Yeah. I think Timmy's one of, a friend of hers. She loves us, doesn't she? I'm not sure. Oh, no. No, that's uh, you're thinking of um, Natalie from EastEnders. She's the one. She shot Phil, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's the creepiest episode. So this little girl gets possessed by her imaginary friend. Okay. The whole of the first bit's set in like a white room. I'm going to have to show it to you, I think. It's only 20 minutes long. Mm. It terrified me as a kid. And the possessed version of this little girl sings, Girls and boys come out to play. Do, 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 do. <gasps> it, used, it terrified me. Lisa from EastEnders, Carlos Bob and Stoffer says. Um, Katie Fraser says, oh God, I remember this episode. This one was scary. Yeah, it's called the... I had to like try and find it to find out. And it's um, called The Exorcism of Amy. What a weird kids TV we name. Wa we watched some horrific stuff, didn't we, as kids, didn't yeah. we? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. So, The Exorcism of Amy. It's on YouTube, the whole episode. Um, Gandria Gauls just said it as well. Boys and girls come out to play, kept being played during the episode. It's the scariest kids' TV show I ever watched. It stayed with me. Those I don't are, watch horror films I think, or anything I think like a lot, that. I think a lot of our creepiest memories are sometimes related to scenes that have, like, like with um, Freddy Krueger. There was a skipping song, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, one, two, Freddy's coming for yeah. you. Three. But this, just honestly watch it it's terrifying the little girl gets when she's asleep gets possessed the bad version of amy's like it's played by the same actress but there's this weird like creepy white room that this ghost girl lives in oh it, honestly frightening Scylla says far too frightening unsuitable for children Scylla, you were wandering the corridors of lwt you could have put a stop to this sort of thing instead you let esther do all the campaigning while you took all the glamour Still will be angry. Right. Number one. You'll be glad to know that my my final one isn't horrific or traumatising or... It was what quelled my nightmares. I lived for these adverts. The PG Tits Monkeys. <laughs> I just love the fact that they changed the storylines. There's... Um, I think I've got a... Um, on my... YouTube favorite videos. I've got this as a favorite. When we, <laughs> which is every single PG Tips advert. When we're in our um, tribute to <laughs> in our tribute to the movie Beaches, Wind Beneath Our Wings video. When we're playing cards as Bette Midler and uh, that dies, we're actually playing PG <laughs> PG Tips Chimp Stops Trumps, and um, Alan shows me <laughs> she she the tips <laughs> Shirley. Shirley, Shirley Tips. Shirley Tips. Because Shirley Tips got a lovely bat wing jumper, hasn't she? Oh, they were, they were... I know I know. people say, well, the, the monkeys were mistreated. They, they were. They must but... be were, but oh, my God. And as um, Mark Mundane Pearson said, they were voiced by famous people like Miriam Margoyles and Patricia Hayes and... Melanie Fairley said when she was little, she actually thought they were talking. Yeah, and I loved them. I know she got to my nana's and she used to save me the little PG tip. We didn't drink PG tips. And both Darren Bramble and Lee Ludlow have both said, do you know the piano's on my foot? You think I'll play it. Um, um, I Dale says it. it's the taste. And it's, I particularly love the old ladies. when they. I mean, somehow I've got back wing glasses on. Didn't they put peanut butter on their gums? So they go... Hey, hey, hey. Well, somebody said they used to put like a, a rubber thing. Ah. Oh. But um, they certainly stopped, didn't they? Yeah. What, what replaced PG Tips? PG um, Tips Jim Johnny Vegas, wasn't it? With that... Oh, uh, with knitted... Monkey. Oh, yeah. And now you don't even see PG Tips... Adverts. Adverts. Do they still make PG Tips? Do they advertise? I don't know. You're a Yorkshire tea drinker, aren't oh, you? Oh, well, yeah. I'm all Yorkshire tea through and through. Is, well, is, remember... that that, is it that different? Yorkshire tea from PG Tips? Oh, it's, yeah. It's just strong. <laughs> it's just tea. Um... 
Melanie Felly says the Tour de France one was good. I don't even oh, remember that. It's something about the tunnel. Are they in Little Lycra? No, there's somebody digging the <laughs> somebody digging the tunnel or something. <laughs> and there's there's a hairdressing one. Oh, there's so many. Like you know, whenever I'm feeling down or I'm not, I'm unwell. I pop I pop all the PG Tips adverts on. Let's have a look. It's a toast. Uh, my number one. My number one. I'm going to play it for you first. Hey, my little Sherry says you've got a Facebook thing where it's got us a picture. Well, that's not, my, not it. Was that my, not meant to be shown? No. Let me Is have a look. It's gone. Say no. Wow. Oh, it's gone. Let me try and play it to you, lovelies. We went to the bingo, didn't we? Not long ago. Yeah, we did. So talk about the bingo and I'll find my little we tried, video. We went to uh, Mecca Bingo because we said, oh, we've been... Uh, that's my went to bingo. It was in the 90s. Oh, oh, my God. We got there and it was like, because we joined, they said you can have all the books for the evening for five quid. And we're like, whoa, yeah. Oh, my God, but they called the numbers so quick, didn't they? Yeah. It was like four and five, 45, legs 11, two and nine. Tw and it's like, God, we were trying to... With dabbers, trying to knock all our little numbers out. And um, oh, he was just so. And then as soon as one game finished, they started another one, didn't they? It was, it was like a mammoth night, and you were really stressed, weren't you? Really she stressed. Couldn't, Jane couldn't keep up with all the numbers. <laughs> Let me see if I can play this. I don't think I'm going to be able to. Let's see if we can do this. I think I know what it is. I've worked it out. Oh, oh, I don't think it's going to play. Oh. <laughs> Okay, Elliot, what's your question? I'd like to ask five star where it's like fucking crap, they're fucking Thanks very much, Elliot. Nice to Bye. hear from you. I'm sure yeah, Tammy would have made a lot more sense. Let's move on to line three. Have you got a sensible question? Okay, Elliot, what's your question? I'd like to ask five star where it's like fucking crap, they're fucking Thanks very much. Thanks so much, Elliot. Bye bye. You get a free badge. Bye. It was worth waiting, eh? Wasn't that awful? Melanie Furley says, My ex was the call up on before Elliot. Isn't it shocking? On a. Yeah, going live. Uh, what, five star, why are you so effing shit? I, when I said to Timmy Alexis that, that we were doing this um, today, the first thing he sent me was that that scene and I said it's already my number one it's my number one because Timmy interviews one of five star on his bed and they mm. they reference that so they did they did a good job of drowning it out though didn't they really you heard a bit of it but it didn't <gasps> yeah but can you imagine five star layer in that it was such a shocker because because he does actually go hi I'd like to ask a question like it's just last and then something just like just goes for it can, apparently then he's he's apologized now I think he's actually mm. come he's actually outed himself and said who it is. Melanie says the Matt Bianco one was good as well. I don't remember that. I just remember the five star one. But um, was Matt Bianco, did they did they get sworn at as well? But Sarah Green handled it well, didn't she? She did. We can now talk about the bingo because I, I was busy beavering on my clips there. But yeah, so my number one, you've seen it. Number one in my uh, shocking countdown is... Uh, five stars. Five star ongoing live um, yeah we went to the bingo I've just dropped something I've got to pick it up we went to the bingo the mecca bingo um, it's we, not the we same played. I went with my nana and my granny my, oh, my nana and my games. granny my mum and my nana in 1994 and um, then you could just buy the books you could buy one book or two and I think my nana said oh buy three because if you buy six it's too much but, but Mecca gave us all six, didn't they? Yeah, yeah, so you have all the numbers, so you, you have to, you're dabbing away. And then what's what's weird as well is, and Martin, who we went with, did this, you can do it electrical, so you get a tablet. So basically you don't have to do anything, you don't have to search for numbers, because it just does it for you. So he was just sat there. Yeah. And, it, and so what happens is most people who are on that, not doing that, just on the thing, it just, they shout as soon as it, yeah, the number comes up. They're already like one, and we're over. 
we're trying to find the numbers. I found it really stressful. And what they would do is the the, the games that, uh, that they would play would be like one after another without a break. And then there'd be like a break for half an hour where they wanted to sort of plug these machines with yeah. pound coins. On your table, you could play table. other games. And I thought, oh, you'd rather us do that, I think, rather than play these games. Oh, it was... Um, I mean? Yeah, it was... It was it, it, it was wasn't, odd, wasn't it? It's such a beautiful building. Oh, my goodness. It's amazing kind of old cinema. And it was a fr- was it Friday night. Uh, it might have been and Friday it was, night. It was so empty. Yeah. But, but, um, we spent our Friday nights. But then what, what happened is I had to sort of join old, uh, old-fashioned way because he was going, yeah, scan the barcode. And my friend just didn't do that. So I had to fill in all the forms and everything and give them my phone number. Well, I was inundated one or two or three times a day going, Asking you trying to play bingo, you can come here or you can do it at home. You do it in bed, you do it at the toilet. And so I had to sort of like reject the, you know, the calls yeah. or the texts coming through. So like, leave me alone. I'm not into gambling. Lulu Dud Duds says, mm. it is stressful. If you dare to speak, you get a scowl from all the old ladies who are yeah, there with we, a packed lunch and a flask. A woman who's eating a big sausage she told us to shut up or not. She didn't say shut the fuck up. No, she was just, and then she, and then they brought this big, massive sausage on a plate to her, which she then sort of went, ate like that. Honestly, it was so, it was such hard work. If we did our bingo at that speed, we'd get lynched, <laughs> wouldn't we? We'd get better lynched. Yeah. Coral says, "Was it the coral bingo?" No, it Mecca. It was Mecca Coral. I was shocked how quick it was. Because you go, because you'd say you'd have one number left, and somebody go, how, here. They don't say house or bingo, they go, here. Yeah. And then you hear this, like, oh. all these like groans. And Look who's just popped in, Alison Moyna. Hello, love. Alison Moyna, Choir Wars. Alison is our gorgeous mate uh, who I knew from growing up in Southport, and then we knew because we lived down the road from each other in Broadstairs. And she now lives in Cornwall, and she is a choir master. And a fab singer. And a fab singer. And um, she, uh, she's, she's set up a new choir down where she's, where she's living now, and there's choir wars on, because someone's like saying, you shouldn't be having another choir in this town. I run the choirs. We used to go and see it, didn't we, Broad says with her choir. The choir were great. And they'd sing like really funky songs, wouldn't they? Yeah. Because she'd give them like funky songs to sing. And we'd go every Christmas for the... Switching on the Christmas lights and broad stairs and Ali and the Warblers would be singing carols. Um, Mark Hall says we should do a, a round at that speed at our bingo. I don't think we could because of, because we've got a no, cage we of balls. we can because the lovely Mr Bramley would have to do the electric gave one. us an electric bingo machine where you just press a button and the numbers come up so we could do that. <laughs> Look at our lovely choir mistress what she's just said about... <laughs> <Balance>. <laughs> Oh, oh we love you, Alison. We miss you. Um, right, so it is, it's the end of our little show. It's quarter past nine. So I know some of you are disappearing and going off well, can to I, can, I, can I just ask? Yeah. Um, anybody that goes to bingo, I know the Welsh boys do, um, do you find it quite hard to follow the calls? Are, are they just like speed shouters? And the other thing that happened is <laughs> there was people doing bingo calling, but not in the room. It was coming over at Tannoy. I was going, oh, thank, yeah. it was thank, it was thank you, Mecca Hull. Yeah. Thank you, Mecca Thanet. It goes national. Yeah. I knew it would go national. Um, Kate Fraser says, night boys. Helen says, good night. She's recovering from Easter craft day at school. It was as bad as it sounds. Um, oh, blowing eggs. Yeah. So, night night to everyone who's going. We are going to come back after we've played a song. Um, I've got something special for you in the finale tonight. A lot of you missed this last week, um, so I've chosen it for this week's finale. We will, we'll, we'll be back after this. If anyone wants to hang out with us. What's happened to all the decent music, eh? The music, what I like. That old time rock and roll. Woo-hoo! Just take those old records off the shelf. I sit and listen to them by myself. Today's music ain't got the same soul I like that old time rock and roll Don't try to take me to a disco You'll never even get me out on the floor In ten minutes I'll be out of the door I like that old time rock and roll You like that old time rock and roll That kind of music just soothes my soul I reminisce about the days of old
got the same soul. I like that old time rock and roll. Still like that old time rock and roll. That kind of music just suits my soul. I reminisce about the days of old. And that old time rock and roll. And that old time rock and roll. And that old time rock and roll. Oh, you've got to have a bit of grot bags, haven't you? We have got a lovely bit of grot bags. I love grot bags. Of course, we could have played this. There comes a time When we hear a certain call When the world must come together as one There are people dying and it's time to lend a hand. There are people dying. <laughs> Scylla, you're always there. You're always at the touch of a button. It's just, um, we chose grot bags. <laughs> but Scylla, you've sang, you've sang a lot of songs. I was shocked. I've shocked. I was shocked. We love Scylla. These past few years when I've realised how many covers she did. Oh yeah, on oh, she's done, she's done. I think she's done nearly every single song. But even on her album, her albums are great, aren't they? Yeah, I, I, I actually like Scylla. Well, I like Scylla. We have got some Scylla albums, and we actually like them. I know some way. people aren't Scylla fans, but I, she's on my um, iPod. Um, Mark Hall said um, he can keep up with the dabbing now. Pete Potofsky says, I was left behind at the speed of Hastings Bingo. So I went and got myself some watery baked beans on a paper plate. And then I got just reading too loudly. Yeah. <laughs> and our friend Ali has just said that she was singing the other night and somebody said that um, they, she reminded them of Son of Black. <laughs> Ali, Ali gigs around uh, Cornwall and uh, Devon or Dorset. Devon, isn't it? Um, and yeah, she's got an amazing voice. But yeah. Perhaps we should ask Ali to send us a... a we could... Uh, uh, her singing surprise surprise oh Ali you could do a little bit of um, what have we got have I got any more Scylla at the touch of a button happy birthday to you happy birthday to you happy birthday we'll get you and Paddy to recreate that yeah um oh Pete did Sinna go bingo in with you or were you, were you solo <laughs> oh and Pete I wonder how little Red is Oh, a little red's lovely looking. Um, D'Angelo won the jackpot at the bingo. Did you? You've actually won. Mm. We were close though, weren't we? One or two uh, always away. one or two numbers away. But I think everybody's is, is. There was always, like, I w there'd be times where I'd be doing it and I'd missed a number. And then I thought, you know, I can't even, there's no point even playing the rest of this page because yeah, I've missed a number. But what we didn't realise is on the wall, there's a big massive chart with all the numbers that are called. I'd I didn't know never that. Never told us that. Mark, uh, Mark has just said, our bingo, one of the callers has a speech impediment, so we, we, we're not really sure of the numbers, so we have to well, solely not, rely on the big screen. That's not good, is it? They, obviously didn't, they didn't work that out at the interview. <laughs> um, Feed Me Seymour says, she has a friend who worked in the kitchen of Gala Bingo, and she says, <laughs> there's always a stampede for baked, potato, baked beans on hot potato. <laughs> I've got a feeling that Mecca are perhaps are struggling, because when I joined... They gave me a little voucher booklet. Yeah, we got um, free drinks, didn't we? And the first three visits, you only pay £5 for all the books. And there's a free drink for you every night you come for those three visits. And that's quite a lot to give and away, the food, isn't it? And the food was kind of Weatherspoons-y. But... Oh, yeah, the food looked rough, but... <laughs> but it was like two meals for eight quid or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it looked all right. It looked I, think, I think the boys bought some chips, didn't they? And they were quite nice. But the trouble is, is when you're playing and the food arrives, it just goes cold. Oh, yeah. You either play the game or eat your food. I was at the bar trying to get a couple of drinks and then the bingo started out to run back, didn't I, and Un leave the drinks? Un unlike Shusha Sausage, she knew when there was going to be a big break. <laughs> so she ordered her food for that half an hour break, didn't she? What's her name? Shusha Sausage. Shush. Shush. <laughs> Shusha Sausage. Um, oh, do you know, one of my moments I'll never forget should have been the talking dog. Oh, yeah, Shusha There's loads of kiddie... Memories, isn't there? We're going to have to do this one again. You can, we write, can do another. I mean, load. I was stuck really because there was more. I mean, one was the Leslie Judd tea thing. Um, and did all... um, did reception ever come back with Leslie Judd's tea scolding? No, I don't. I think it's hard to find. It might not be even Leslie Judd. 
Leslie Joseph? No. What Leslie was... Ash? No. I One knew... of the Leslies. It, I'm sure, I thought it was Leslie Judd from the Blue Peter. I'm Because sure, she said, poor, literally, poor tea on her. My bucket. Uh, Scylla says, it sounds like this bingo's very hard work. Mm. Did Scylla ever host a quiz show? Yeah. What? The, where, where, there was, where it was your dream... Your dream oh yeah, idol. where she took BMXs away from kids. Yeah, but what else? I'm sure she might have been a guest on like Celebrity Squares or something. Or did she never host Pyramid like, Game? She didn't. She wasn't. No, she was more like you know she'll either bring you love or give you a fitted kitchen. Maybe I should ask. She? Maybe I should ask Scylla. Scylla, were you ever in Dictionary Corner? It's the sort of place I can imagine her popping up, mm. but. She's LWT. She's LWT royalty. Louis, she Louise is asking whether Martin gets sausages on the menu for the bingo in June. <laughs> I, yeah, I think he will. We'll do proper. We have them at the quiz. And we'll they do go, proper bingo food. Yeah, we'll do shush a sausage break. Um, Alex Clark has said it's called Silla's Moment of Truth. That's it. Richard Bobbin Stuffer has just said it's called Moment of Truth. So I'm not sure if Scylla's moment of truth is part I've of I've got a feeling that Alex might be right, because I think Scylla was like, you know, if I'm going to be a, in a hosting show, I want my name. Well, I don't know. Scylla herself has said moment of truth. But wasn't it called Scylla Black's Blind Date or Scylla's Blind Date? Or I think that? it was called Scylla's Blind Date. That, like, Scylla's it's, Surprise it's, Surprise? It's a bit like now it's got... Um, um, like they're ex- she's executive producer and mm-hmm. everything. Like when a, an actor's in something, can they be executive producer? Like American in- interior design masters with Alan Carr. Is he executive producer now? With Alan Carr. Oh That's yeah. Title. Is it really? Yeah. Not just. It's not just um, interior design masters. Oh, it's with Alan Carr. Scylla says. Scylla says. No, I was exclusively LWT by contract. Um, Jason said it's Scylla's moment of truth. And uh, yeah, our receptionist has come says. through saying it's Scylla's moment of truth. Um, Scylla, of course, just says it's moment of truth because she doesn't have to say her own name, does she? No. But that was when she... <laughs> didn't she, like, make a housewife, like, learn every tube station on the yeah. on the northern line and then <laughs> show the children what they'd win? Yeah. And if the mum couldn't get them, so she'd either, take it away. It was either a month in Disney <laughs> and if they lost, it goes, a couple little kiddie bikes. Go and get some little couple of games. Scylla herself is stating adamantly it was called the moment of truth, <laughs> not Scylla's moment of truth. <laughs> Did Scylla sing the theme tune? Uh, there a... No, no. no. Um, Alex Clark says it's similar to how Supermarket Sweep became Dale's Supermarket Sweep. But that was Dale's, wasn't it? It was nobody else's. Didn't they bring that back with? Um, I, I do love him. What's his name? Rylan. Rylan. Yeah. But it was always Dale Winter. Came back with Rylan, but they stretched it to an hour-long episode. Because I always love it when people say, Spaghetti Hoops Dale, Dog Shampoo Dale. We've talked about your supermarket sweep technique, haven't we? Yeah, before? we have. Because we have different techniques. I'm going for the inflatables. You, well, you go for the inflatable and you you make sure you get your pick and mix <laughs> and you make sure you get your coloured tins because they're the money, they're the money grabbers. Are the coloured tins in like the dinted tins basket? Yeah. And you get Dale's three items, don't you? Yeah, you've got to get the Dale's three items. You don't just go sh- wild in the aisles. Yeah. You have a system. And don't go for big packs of nappies. <laughs> you go for things like um, electrical goods, like hair dryers. Don't you? Scylla's adamant. Capital letters have been involved. Scylla says it was the moment of truth. It was based on a Japanese format. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. And then Mark Mondome and Pearson's come out of left field saying, I remember watching Scylla brushing a crocodile's teeth. Does that surprise you? I don't know what on. Um, yeah, so supermarket sweep. What would you? What, what's your technique? What are you heading for? Louise says, great idea for another video. Supermar- Louise, you need to find us a supermarket that we can t- run about in. We, t- we just do a green screen. <laughs> Red Peppers, Dale. Oh, yeah, we just put ourselves in it. What do yeah. they wear? They wear little pastel sweatshirts, don't they? Yeah, when they're, tr- when they're doing the trolleys. No, because we'd just be answering Dale's questions, wouldn't we? Sorry? We'd just be answering Dale's questions. And then we could be the checkout girls. Yeah. Check it out. It was a song as well, wasn't it? Do, 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 do. Did they all release a single? I know. Louise Dudman says, I've got a supermarket for you. <laughs> Going after dark. <laughs> Switch all the lights on. Um, so, we are, we're busy beans at the moment, aren't we? We're getting plans for stuff. Because, um, we, we, as I've said, we're doing the photographs for the SJT. So, they want all the year's bingo photos before Easter. 
So we're so we're getting costumes. We're getting costumes ready, ready for, for well, only from waist upwards, um, and then we'll um, do the rest. And then we've got a quiz coming up in two weeks' time. Um, so we've got to write fifth. that and plan that. Um, Louise is going to be there. We've got then we uh, we're around. I'm around for a bit, so we might be able to do fit in some videos. We might be able to make a fun video. We've got a couple of ideas. Haven't well, we? we were going to do one at the weekend, but then I he went injured and himself. Injured myself, and the video we were going to do is was something similar to that. We were going to do a no win no fee like ninety nine. Like eighties ad, but you know the one with the woman with a high fringe, and she drops her makeup she brushes. Slips. I think she. <laughs> we were going to do that, but and we were laughing about doing it and watching them. Then Alan slips and does his elbow in. I didn't slip. Well, you kind of hurt your elbow, did. didn't you? I tried to stop my trolley from going through dog poo. Did your makeup brushes fall on the floor? Nearly tin of beans, nearly did. <laughs> um, dial Dale and be a winner. Says I'm liking all this little little fun. Quips here like uh, Wednesday Dale Dale and is it Dale Dale and be a winner and is it Emma Dale? <laughs> Dale special item. Feed me Seymour. You, yeah, our live shows, Katie. We've the main ones. I think the next one is June the thirtieth. They're on Sundays, so um, they're peppered throughout the year. But we are looking at kind of bringing them out into the wild. Manly Fairley says we could have done a robin's nest uh, and. Alan could be the Irish chap with the sling. Oh, is that the guy from... Um, from Faulty Towers. Towers, Mr. Faulty. Um, Scylla's chatting away. Let's have a look. Scylla's talking about um, when a magazine journalist infiltrated Blind Date. <laughs> I was furious. I said, right, I'm putting this to her in front of a live audience on camera. <laughs> I just like when she'd do a little wedding or when they're a little romance. Oh, so yeah. Scylla said, oh, shall I get me out? Do you remember Scylla's hat was ridiculed by the nation, wasn't it? I think so. Because it was like a big tea cosy. Yeah. Um, Paul McFarlane says, you hurt your arm because Sherry was throwing you out of fiddle at six. David Charles is here. Hello, David. Nice to see you. Um, we're about to go. I don't know if you've been lurking, David, all along. We normally pop on 8 o'clock till half 9, don't Martian, we? Martian Hyde is also here. Yes, he's popped in. Where he's on is this he? side. He says, just like you in B&M. What, B &M? Oh, I love B&M. Just opened and... Well, he's taken, taken him from Wilco's. Oh, yeah, we went on a little day trip to B&M, didn't we? My God, there's so much in there. <laughs> Wilco's would be like, I don't know, eye level or head level. B&M's like... Martin says, I pushed you. You did. And Mark Hall's saying I didn't slip. She pushed me. Um, maybe bring your show down near me in Hertfordshire. Oh, Hertfordshire's a bit posh for us, Katie Fraser. We'll have to clean our act up a bit. I know. We? We'd have to don tweeds. All right, loves. It's uh, half nine. So we're going to... Sort of Peggy out. We're going to make sure you hear the beep when you're playing Supermarket Sweep. Can we see our little Peggy before you go? Let's see if she's there. See if she's moved. There she is, asleep. There she is. You see, she's really fluffy at the moment. A little winter coat. So in about a few weeks, she'll be getting a little haircut, won't she? Yeah. Well, when she gets better. When she gets better. So she's on all sorts of medication and fingers crossed. Everyone give good thoughts for Peggy this week. So we're hoping that she sorts herself out and doesn't have to go into the vets for a so day. So she has to have a pink pill twice a day, doesn't she? Yeah, we don't want Which to put her in the vets. have to push into cheese. And then a little sort of squirt of... Anti-inflammatory. Anti-inflammatory um, in her food in the morning. Yeah, and she had to have a little thermometer up of a bot-bot today. She didn't like it at all. Um, she doesn't like that. Well, would you like it? <laughs> all right, loves. <laughs> Time for us to go. Um, uh, have a lovely week, my darlings. Have a lovely weekend. And we'll leave you, if we can, we'll leave you with the Brookside cast singing... Uh, their lovely charity single which was never released enjoy all you can about julia brogan see you later bye and here with their own song let them know the cast of brookside with special guest ruby turner
Look at this. Yeah. No, I don't think so. Because I've been around.